Okay, so before we start with derivative stuff, we got to figure out, we got to kind of reach back in our memory and figure out what is a log? How does a log work? What's the difference between the word log and ln, right? So log. A log with a base of four of one half equals what? So what this is really saying, because this is, this is asking, right? This is the question, right? What that's saying is, in other words, it's saying four to what power equals one half. That's all a log asks. A log just says, what power do I need? What power do you need to get that as an answer? So what power do I need for four to get one half as an answer? Well, first of all, four is four over one. One half is a fraction, right? So it, I'm gonna need to flip it, reciprocal. So you're gonna need a negative, right? And then to go from four to two, what power is that? Mm -hmm. Square root, right? Yeah. So this guy is negative one half. That's the power that I'm going to need. That's what a log asks. A log just says, what power do you need? What power do you need to get a certain answer? Okay. What power of four? What power of four do I need to get one half as an answer? Okay. This one says, I don't have the base. The base is I don't know, but I know the power is going to be three and I know the answer is going to be 81. So X to the third power equals 81. What number to the third power multiplied by itself three times is going to give me 81? I don't think there is a number, is there? No, it's. I think it was supposed to be four. I think this guy was supposed to be four. I think that's what it was. I remember this typo from last year. I didn't fix it. So what to the third power is going to be 81? And that's going to be three. Okay. Okay, so we did two logs. Now LN, you're gonna see a lot of LNs, not a lot of logs today. You're gonna see a lot of LNs. What's the difference between log and natural log? Okay. So what is the difference? They both have the word log in it. Log is a log. L, the L part of LN means log. Well, what does the N mean? What's what does the N mean? No one knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Are they? Exactly. It's a log, right? It's a log. Yeah, the N means natural. I don't know why it's LN instead of NL. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. Log is log with any base. So log with any base, any number there. Natural log has to have E as a base. So instead of writing E as a base every time, they just change it to natural log. That's all it means, okay? And what is E? E is a number that's around 2.72, I think, 2.78, 2.72, something like that. It comes from finance, mainly from finance. How does it, how do they calculate it? Well, if you were to plug in numbers from, eh, from to infinity, if you were to plug in numbers into this equation here, you were to find the limit, I should say, of this equation as n equals, as n approaches infinity, you would always come close to this number here. You wouldn't get any higher than that number. It would not get any higher than that number. And that's what natural log is. That's what E is. So when we're finding E to that base there, that's what that is. Okay. That's what that is. So like I said, today, 
you're not going to see a lot of the word log. You're not going to see a lot of the word log, but you will see LN, which is a log. Okay, that's the one they're focused on. That's the one that's focused that that we focus on in this class a lot. Okay, so two equations here. Two types of two different types of functions. One's an exponential function. Exponential means you have something to a power. So when I when I say exponential, I don't mean like x squared. That's not exponential. x squared is quadratic, right? x cubed. That's not exponential. It's got an exponent, but it's not exponential. That's cubic. What I mean by exponential is where the exponent is an ex an exponent the the exponent is a variable. Okay? That's exponential. Okay? So anytime you're dealing with those, you have two ways to find the derivative. So you just got to figure out which one it is. Is it this guy here or this guy here? Well, A is always going to be a number. 3 to the x power, 4 to the x power, whatever it is. E, this is the one you're going to see almost exclusively. That's the one you're going to see almost exclusively. That guy right there um is the one we deal with a lot in this class the uh, the one above you really don't we'll see a couple problems like that today but you really don't see that one okay but that's how you do it this is your this is your kind of your rule it's on your sheet too it's on your your pink sheets let's see this one goes here it's on the it's on the back of your pink sheets all of these, that's where I got them from. I literally just kind of pasted them from. Okay. So how do you find the derivative? Well, we consider this number A and this number U. Okay. So the first thing we do is we find the natural log of A, whatever that is. Multiply it times the same thing that was already there. Times the derivative of the power. All multiply together. Okay. If it's E, it just repeats itself. Whatever it was before, it repeats itself. And then you multiply times the derivative of whatever the power is. Okay. E's look like the most intimidating thing because it's E and they always kind of look ugly, but they're really one of the easiest things to find derivatives of because it always repeats itself. And then it always finds the derivative of what's ever uh, the exponent. Okay. So they're, they're kind of easy. Logs, logs. Again, you're not going to see a lot of these. These guys, you're not going to see a lot of. You just won't. I can, I can think of on one hand how many times I've seen these types of questions ever in this class. Just because we don't really deal with them. But this one is the big one right here. This guy right here is the guy that you're going to see a lot of. You're going to see a lot of LNs. AP Calculus likes their LNs and they like their E's. You see those all the time, okay? So if it's a regular log, you got a base, and then you got a number here, okay? So on top is the derivative of whatever is here. On bottom is the natural log of whatever A is times, this guy just repeated itself, this guy just repeating, okay? Natural log, natural log. Well, on top, it's the derivative of whatever this guy is. And on bottom, it just repeats whatever this guy is. That's it. Okay. Again, these are kind of one of the most intimidating things to see. You see natural log, like you look at this guy. It's very intimidating, I know. LN, what does that mean? Well, it's not that bad. Once you identify that it's a natural log and you have to find the derivative, you just use your steps, okay? So let's go to our steps, right there, okay? So if we're gonna find the derivative, y prime, right? So it says, on top is the derivative of u. Well, in this case, 4x is u, right? That's u, okay? Well, the derivative of 4x is just 4. 
on bottom, you just repeat whatever was in there, 4x, 4x. I can reduce that because 4 goes into 4 one time. So you get 1 over x. That's it. OK. Number 2. Or not number 2. It's a typo. It should be b. Okay, y prime, natural log, the derivative of a natural log says the derivative of what's ever here. Let me highlight it better. Let me go back here. Okay, so whatever is here goes on the bottom. Okay, so whatever was there goes on the bottom. So x squared minus three goes on the bottom. Now the derivative of that goes on top. The derivative is two X. This one you're done because you can't simplify any further. Okay, Let's go to the back, do letter C. Do letter C right now. Repeats on the bottom, on top is the derivative. Yeah, go ahead, huh? just take the pass, yeah. Okay, all right, let's go here. Letter D. So what is, anytime we're working with derivatives, what is the main thing, what is the main rule, what is the main thing you should tell yourself when you see a root? Give it a power, yeah, give it a power. When we're working with root or when working with derivatives and you see a root, give it a power. So it would be x to the one half power, right? That's the yellow part. X to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of x, right? So let's do the same thing. The bottom. Is going to repeat itself, right? X to the one half. The top is the derivative. Okay, so we're going to use the power rule for that. So that means we're going to move the one half to the front. X and then subtract one half. Okay. All right. Well, let's clean it up. So I'm going to move this guy. to the bottom because it's got a negative exponent. So I have x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. On top, I have a 1 half. But it's not really a 1 half because it's 1 half times. So it's actually this. That's actually what it is. OK. On the bottom, we have x times x, they both have the same base. So we add the exponents. You get that? x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half, you add the 1 halves and you get one whole. OK. All right. All right, so now f. F is a little different because now I have something in front of the natural log. So this is the biggest thing I see. The biggest thing I see here is people trying to use the same thing we did. X squared is not a coefficient. 
x squared is not a coefficient. x squared is a separate function. So this guy and this guy are separate functions. They're being multiplied together. So if they're being multiplied together, we have to use the product rule. Mm -hmm. We have to use the product rule. Okay, so now x natural log of x is just a part of the power rule or the product rule. Okay, so the product rule says you take the first one and multiply it times the derivative of the second one. Okay, so natural log of x. X goes on the bottom. The derivative of it goes on top. Derivative of x is just 1. Now the opposite. The first, or sorry, the second one times the derivative of the first. 2x. Okay. Kind of clean that up a little bit. So the first one has a fraction. So that's what that is. And then this guy, I'm going to move the natural log up here. Okay, well, I can cancel out of power with that x. So I get x plus 2x natural log of x. Can I add those together to make 3x? Can I do this? 3x natural log of x. Are those equal? Because I guarantee you on a test, you're going to see both of them. One will be A, one will be B. Because that, they like to do that. So can I? There's only one answer. You can't have both. Is it this guy or is it this guy? When is the only time we can combine like combine those two? They're like terms, right? Mm -hmm. Say it again. Say it again. So x is in front of the natural log. So my question is, are these two guys here in the red, are they like terms? No, they're not because of this part here. They don't have this tag. They're very close, right? They're very close. It's like last names. Last names that are very close, you think those, they're not related, right? Even if they had the same last name, they might not be related. But if they're very close, right, are they related? No, they're not because this guy here, is not over here. If that tag was over here, yeah. If you had natural log of x like that, then yeah, add them together. 3x natural log of x. But because of that, we cannot. Just be careful there, because like I said, I've seen that on tests, where this will be one answer, and then B will be the answer I just showed you. And you're like, uh, which one is it? Has nothing to do with calculus, but it's just it's just algebra combining like terms, right? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Why don't you try G on your own? Try G. I'll give you a few minutes to do G. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use the quotient rule, like I just did there, or you can use the power or the product rule. You can rewrite it like this. You can say natural log of x times x to the negative one. You can do that. Most of the time you just use the quotient rule though. Okay. For division, you use quotient rule. Okay, so low times the derivative of the high, which is one over X. Because natural log of X, we just found derivative of that earlier, right here, and that derivative is right there. Okay. Minus high times the derivative of the low over low squared. Okay, so let's finish this out. So we have x over x minus the natural log of x 
over x squared. Okay. Well, x over x is just 1. So we have 1 minus natural log of x over x squared. Here's the question I get. Can I do this? No. Yeah, don't even try that. Don't mess with things that are on the inside of the parentheses, whether it's trig or whether it's natural logs. If it's like that, we don't cancel guys out like that. Okay, we don't cancel guys out like that. We leave it like so. Because this guy isn't a coefficient. It's not, it's, 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 it's what you're trying to find natural log of. Okay. All right, so now let's move to exponentials now. Exponentials. Okay. Exponentials. E, more specifically. Okay. So, go back a few. Let's go to the front. Exponentials. Two options. I can have something to a power of x. Or I can have e to a power of x. Either one. If it's e, first thing it does is repeat itself. So just rewrite it. Times the derivative of whatever the power is. Okay. So. First thing it does is repeat itself. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to repeat it. e to the 2x minus 1. Times. Derivative of the power. The derivative of the power is just 2. So move the 2 to the front. You get 2e to the 2x minus 1. All right, letter B. E to the 3 over x. Well, it repeats itself. Times the derivative of the exponent, 3 over x. Well, I don't want to have to use quotient rule for that little guy. If it's a little guy like that, 3 over x. 1 over x, 4 over x. Yeah, I think I'm just going to change it to that, make it a little easier on myself. So e to the 3x negative 1 power. So derivative of that would be negative 3 e to the negative 2, or sorry, x to the negative 2. So you get negative 3 e to the 3 over x over x squared, because x squared needs to go on the bottom because it is a negative exponent. OK, we did e c. We've done c already, right? Or was it different? I think it was a little bit different. All right, we do. It is a little different. OK, so try c. You've done C, we did see a little earlier where they were flipped, where there was a reciprocal of that. See if you'll get a different answer. This one's a natural log, so now we're moving back to the natural log. Okay, so uh, low times the derivative of the high minus the high times the derivative of the low. I've, I've, I found derivative of this guy. This is the third time I found it. So you can just memorize it. One over, it's just one over x. The derivative of natural log of x, as long as it's just x, one letter in there, it's just going to be one over whatever it is. Okay. 
And then on bottom, I get low squared. So natural, the whole thing squared. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see, natural log of x minus, again, I get this one over x thing here. This one over, or x times one over x. I saw that last time, right? It just simplified to one. And then I get natural log of x squared times itself. Can I do this? No, I cannot do that because of this minus one right here. Because of this minus one, it's a binomial. It's a binomial, so I cannot do that. So you can leave the bottom as natural log of x squared, or you can leave natural log of x times a natural log of x. Okay. That's pretty much the whole section, right? But I just, what I did was I put a bunch of problems on here that look very similar that are a little bit different because you're going to see things that if I do this, what if I do this? What if I do this? What if I do this? And it's just going to lead you to a different type of answer. So like D, D looks like one we've already done. It looks like one of the first ones we did, right? One of the early ones, but it's different. It's different. It's not the same because now you're taking the square root of the whole thing. Okay. So when I change it, it's going to look like this. That is different than the one we did earlier, which was just the X, right? Just the X was, um, had an exponent. Okay. So, My question is, what do you think we're going to use to solve this guy? You've, you've done it many, many times. We've just never done it with a natural log. What do you think we're going to use? Chain rule. Yeah, we're actually going to use the chain rule, right? The chain rule, because we have levels to this guy. We have levels to it. First level, the outside level, is something to the one-half power. Right, And then we have an inside level, the natural log of X. You can say X is another level, but I know what the natural log of X is. The derivative of the natural log of X is just one over X. So I'm not gonna separate them. It's like it said sine of X. I don't have to separate that because I know what that is. Okay, so find the derivative of the green first. All right, so the derivative of the green one half, rewrite everything, subtract a power, first chain, first chain link. Then you find the derivative of the purple. We've done that, this is the fourth time we found derivative of natural log of x. It's just one over x, done. We just got to clean it up because we got some powers. We got some, I got an exponent here. Okay, so I got a negative exponent. So, so I got, I'm going to highlight everything that goes on top, everything that goes on bottom. Okay, so the two is a denominator. X is a denominator. This whole thing is a denominator because it's got a negative power. So all of that yellow stuff is going to go on the bottom. So 2x square root natural log of x. All of that stuff goes on the bottom because for different reasons. Well, the only thing that's left on top is just the one. Okay. So again, it looked similar to this guy here. It looks similar to this guy right here, but it had a different answer because the square root wasn't just over X, it was over the entire thing. So that's what I'm saying. This, this section 
the notes don't take that long, but I made it extra long because I wanted to give you stuff that looked different. Okay, so now we're introducing these guys. Now we're now, not only there's a natural log, but there's a trig function with it. So it's cosine of this guy here. That's the angle. Okay, well, don't even worry about natural log of x. Remember when we had something like this? Cosine of 4x. What did we do when we had find derivative of that guy? How did we do that? You guys just finished that assignment the other day. Chain rule. We use the chain rule, right? We said this guy was the outside. This guy was the inside, right? It's the same thing. Cosine is the outside, natural log of x is the inside. Two levels. So green, the derivative of the green is negative sign. Everything repeats. Should probably put parentheses there too. Okay. Now derivative of the, the purple. 1 over x. Combine them together. Negative sine natural log of x over x. Done. OK. All right, try this one now. Now this one's the opposite. Again, it looks very similar, but it's different, okay? So try this one. I'll give you a few minutes to try this one, see what you get. Letter F. So this one isn't a chain rule problem. This one is not a chain rule problem. It's like one we did earlier. It's like something we did earlier, kind of like this one here or we had natural log of something, right? So we just use the natural log der derivative rules. This is not a chain rule problem, okay? So let's go back to it. So I have natural log of the cosine of x. Well, the derivative rules say for natural log, uh, the bottom repeats itself. The top, oops, not that part, not this part here. Sorry, not completely repeats itself, just the, the inside part. And then the top, you just derivative, right? What is that also? Either one of those is okay, but like on a multiple choice test, they might not have negative sine of x over cosine of x. They would have negative tangent instead. And I, I get this question all the time. Where'd tangent come from? We didn't have to. Well, because that's the same thing as tangent. Okay, multiple choice. These are all multiple choice type problems that you might see. Okay. All right. Let's try. Let's see how many do we have left? Uh, not too many left. Okay. We'll finish a few more and then we'll finish the rest tomorrow and then I'll let you work on the assignment tomorrow too. Okay. All right. Letter G. Letter G. Look at it. Is it a, so it says, it kind of looks like the last one, right? Where we have natural log of that guy there. But what do you notice within the parentheses? There's an X in front of sign, which means a, Product rule, yeah. So we're going to do the same thing we just did on the last one, but within there, we're going to have a product rule. Okay. So the derivative says whatever is in yellow repeats itself. Okay. And then the derivative of that. 
So the derivative of that is going to be a product rule. So the first times the derivative of the second plus um, the second times the derivative of the first, which is just one. Okay, so x times cosine x plus sine of x over x sine of x. Here's my question. Can I do this? No. If this guy had an x right there, absolutely. Right? There's three terms. One, two, three. They all need an x in front to, to be able to do that. And they don't. So I can't do that. Well, see, that's the thing. I Students see, I got a lot of x's going on here. Well, I got to be able to cancel something out, right? They try this. They go this. They go this. And then they go that. All three of them have x's. No, not in the same way. Right? So again, if there was an x here, absolutely cancel out all three. But there isn't there. So we can't do that. So it's done. You're done. One thing you might see. One thing you might see. It's not. So here's the thing. That's correct. But I've seen this before. So they say this is division, right? They say this is division here. It's divided by that. So what they break it up is they say this. They'll say, since each of them is being divided by x sine of x, they'll do this. They'll each give them a sine of x. Then we can cancel things out. Then they'll cancel those out. They'll cancel those out. So then you'll have cosine of x over sine of x plus 1 over x. And then they'll go even further. They'll say cosine of x over sine of x. That's cotangent. So you just got to be careful. Okay? Because I don't know which one's going to be on the multiple choice. The red or the black. I don't know which one's going to be down there. They're both the same answer. Okay, you just got to be careful. Just go until you match something. Because I've had students match the red, get the red answer. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Mr. Flores, I think your test is wrong because it doesn't match one of the answers. Well, you're right, it doesn't match, but that answer is there. All right? So you just got to be careful. That's why, again, I keep going back to this, but that's why I do the summer assignment. Because this is the stuff that leads you from here to here. That's the summer assignment. That has nothing to do with calculus. It's all summer assignment because that's the background that you need. The more, the stronger your algebra skills are, the easier this class is. And that sounds kind of weird. It has nothing to do with calculus. But the stronger your algebra skills are in factoring and doing things like this, deconstructing it, where you're like, oh, okay, so that means... This is divided by sine of x, x sine of x, and this is the easier this class is, okay? So, like, when students ask, like, how can I do well in the class? Have strong algebra skills. Not calculus. I'll teach you calculus. But algebra is something that you've had before in, in math 1, math 2, and math 3, okay? So, the, those strong skills. So, that's why I do the summer time, okay? All right. So, we'll finish the rest tomorrow. It's just kind of repetition, though. It's repetition. It's not anything that's like you've seen it. As long as you can use those two rules, I think you'll be good, okay? We'll finish it tomorrow. And then on 